is the half square triangle scrap quilt sew along and this is block one of 20. But I wanted to show you how each block will be constructed. These are three inch finished half square triangles and they're set four across and four down. So that's 16 half square triangles for each block and you'll have 20 blocks and all of the half square triangles in each block will be a different pattern. So this is the first one and I'm just going to call this block number one because I don't think this setting has a name. So this, the half square triangles will finish at 12 and a half inches and I've added a one inch cut frame around the block. And with this frame around the block, the finished block, each finished block will be 13 inches finished. And we'll talk more about the block in just a minute. Next thing I want you to do is there's a link right now on the top of your screen on the right hand corner. There's a link to download these instructions and these are the instructions for the introduction. It will tell you how the sew along is going to work and where you can find resources. So if you have to hit the pause button, go back and click on that and download these or at least put them on your computer and open them up. If you can't see it on the video, then it will be in the description just below the video. Okay, we're just going to go over these instructions and it will explain everything. First, I want to tell you why we're doing this half square triangle quilt so long. First, I wanted to show you how versatile the half square triangle is. There are so many different ways you can arrange them. It's really the very basic of quilting blocks for our quilt making. And also we wanted to talk about low volume prints because I'm using low volume prints in the sample quilt. You don't have to, but we're going to see how low volume prints are used and how to choose them and how to put them together. So there are three resources for this sew along. The YouTube video you're watching now, it's on my YouTube channel at Carol Thielen. I also have a blog page and there's a link to that here. If you have this file as a PDF, these highlighted areas, you should be able to click on them to go to the, the YouTube channel and the blog. And also we have a Facebook group called the Quilt Makers Workshop. You'll need to answer one question to get into there, but I'll check it and let you in. If you can't click on these, all of these links are in the description of the video. And also all of the links will be everywhere. So they're going to be on the blog. They're going to be on the Facebook group. And the video each week will show you the different blocks that we're going to do. And everything will be rewritten in the, the blog. And it's all going to be on one page. So you just need to go to that one page and bookmark it for the whole time we're doing the sew along. And then the Facebook group is if you have any questions or you want to show off and show us your pretty work, we can put pictures in there and discuss everything and ask questions and answer questions and share ideas. So I think that's going to be fun. Okay, so the quilt information. Here is the layout showing the quilt. And we're going to set them with the blocks. The blocks will be four across and five down. And we're going to sash them. The sashings will be made from the low volume prints and the cornerstones will be made from the dark fabric. So the only fabrics you have to be concerned with are low volume prints and dark fabrics. Make sure you have a good contrast between the two. And then here is the picture of today's block. So the quilt will finish at 62 by 77 approximately. And I've told you about the 20 blocks. Each block is made of 16 half square triangles. There are a total of 320 half square triangles. But don't let that number just get you down because if you do a little bit every week, it goes together fairly fast. What I like to do is cut everything first. So once you decide that's really what you want to do, go ahead and cut everything and cut as much as you can. And at the end, I'm going to give you some suggestions of how to be ready for the next time we meet. Then the scrap fabrics and the low volume prints, that's all here. Now here's something very important. It's probably more important even than the fabric. You'll have to decide which method you want to use to make your half square triangles. And I want you to just choose the method that's best for you, the one where you get the best results and you don't pull your hair out every time you're doing it. So here are just some different things. Specialty rulers, half square triangle rulers, 
There's so many out there, and I haven't used these rulers in a long, long time, so I can't even recommend one to you. But I know there's a lot out there. You probably have two or three in your little toolbox. But if you use rulers and you have a special one you like, then go with that. And then that would determine how you cut your fabric, how big you make your fabric pieces. The next thing is the half square triangle papers. Now these are like thangles, uh, spinning star designs, triangles on a roll. Um, I believe Moda has some. There's a lot of people have different types of triangle papers. And if you like foundation piecing, the papers are a good way to go. You just cut big chunks of fabric and sew six or eight, 12 at a time if you want. The other method is the half square triangles eight at a time. You don't need any special tools for these. You cut the fabric a light and a dark at seven and three quarter inches and then you draw lines and you stitch the lines and you cut them apart and you have eight triangles, half square triangles that look exactly the same. So if you choose this method you'll need 40 dark squares and 40 light squares and then that's all you need for all of your half square triangles. Here is a link to my video that shows half square triangles eight at a time. And again, if you can't click on this, it will be everywhere. On the blog, it'll be at the description in the video. The fourth method, and this is a method I use, is the AccuQuilt. There are two different dies from AccuQuilt, if you're familiar with AccuQuilt. The cube, the 12 inch cube and the 6 inch cube, both have die number 55703. This will make two triangles on each die. So if you layer four to six fabrics, then you'll get um, eight to 12 triangles at a time. The other one, and this is also, it's in the mix and max cube, 12 inch or the six inch. It's the same die is in both. And you can buy this separately. And there's also a half square triangle, three inch finish square, 55009, and there are four triangles on the die, so those are faster to make, faster to cut. And these have the dog ears already cut off and they go together really fast. If you have been on the fence about trying um, the AccuQuilt system, if you look at the, and I, there's a link at the bottom in the description, there's all kinds of links in the description, so you'll have all kinds of ways to, to find your resources. But anyway, it's called the Go Me, G-O, exclamation me m e fabric cutter and it's the small one it looks like this and it's got a little hand hand crank on it and you put the die through here with uh, the fabric and the mat on top and you crank it through and it cuts your pieces this little system comes with that three inch half finished half square triangle die that cuts two triangles so the price of this comes with two, two dies, the half square triangle and quarter square triangle. So if you're on the fence and you want to try it, I think they're running specials, they're always running specials. So see, this is the Go Me fabric cutter and it comes with those two dies. And that would be all you need to cut these, these half square triangles. So the fabric for the half square triangles will be determined by which method you use. And if you need help with that, just Go to Facebook on the Quilt Makers Workshop and ask a question there. It's easier to answer questions there than in the comments of YouTube. You can definitely do that, but it's easier, I believe, to um, answer it in the Quilt Makers Workshop. Either way, your question will get answered. So the next thing we look at, the fabric we need, is for the block frames. Remember that is this one inch or half inch finished frame around each block. And this tells you how much you need and they're, they're all cut from the dark fabric. So the sides will be 12 and a half inches and the top and bottom will be 13 and a half inches. And it's one inch cut. So it gives a nice little half inch finished little border around each block. The next one is the sashing. Now the, the sashing is cut from the low volume prints or the light fabric. And you'll need to have about a one and a half yards total. Uh, the block frames are a total of about a half a yard. The sashing about one and a half yards, and you'll need to cut 49 pieces at two and a half by 13 and a half. Both of these sashing and the block frames, uh, especially the sashing, if you have 
parts or scraps left over from two and a half inch strips, it's good to just cut off your 13 and a half inches from that of the dark fabric. And for the frames, you can actually cut those and have two strips because you're only cutting an inch. So you cut, you can have two strips off of uh, the two and a half inch and you'll have little waste, but you'll be able to use up two and a half inch strips that you just have in your scrap bin. Now the cornerstones you need about a quarter yard total and you'll cut 30 squares at two and a half inches. Now I went into my scrap bin and I looked in the two and a half inch section and I just pulled out 30 of them, the dark ones. And so I didn't even have to cut these, these were already cut. Now before we go to page two of the instructions, I want to talk about low volume prints and our dark fabrics. Let's start by looking at all of the prints in this block. Here's the first row, and I'm pretty happy with the choices in this first row. You see, this is just a regular, almost a solid. This is a grunge, and here's a nice dark fabric, and it has a low volume print in it as well. So these are very good choices here. And these as well, a cream sort of tone on tone, and just a little low volume print. You mostly, from a distance, these look solid. And this is a low volume print that's a more modern type print of these line drawings. And most of the backgrounds are sort of an eggshell, not quite white, but maybe a little bit off-white, and then black or some dark, um, dark color line drawing looking thing. And these are very popular now, so you'll find a lot of, of low volume prints that look like this. The manufacturers now, I think, are really concentrating on uh, collections of low volume prints. So it gives not nice contrast here as well. And then this is good contrast. Even though there's some action going on here, it doesn't distract from the overall light and dark contrast. Then we look at this next row. And again, I'm happy with these um, dots. I think you can't go wrong with small dots on a, a light background. And this is I would consider this a, an older print. It's like a shirting, so it's an off-white color, and it's very light little pattern in it. And then this is a more modern one with that. All of these tend, most of these tend to look solid from a distance. And another light and dark, good contrast. And this is a, a gray, a 1 8 inch stripe. This is getting more where it's it's almost a solid color from a distance, but put a good contrasting dark with it and it works. Here's the same polka dot, and I think we have a polka dot down here too. I love polka dots. I think you can't go wrong as long as they're kind of a small polka dot with a good contrasting fabric. Now this fabric's getting a little loud uh, for me because it's got some a big kind of bold design on it, but the color is bright enough that I think it works. And then, then these are just some good contrast. They, these are a little bit sort of tan color. And you'll see I had the same fabric next to each other here. So I didn't matter too much about these colors. When I started, I made the 320 blocks, uh, 320 half square triangles. And I just picked 16 of them and just started laying out blocks. I don't fret too much if they're next to each other. Maybe the darker ones I would, but I changed those out. So these are just, again, some more examples of low volume prints. Now let me show you some rejects. Here's one reject I did. And one of these fabrics did make it into the quilt and I decided to leave it in there because here it's almost not a low volume or it's not a it's not a very good contrast because if you see this from a distance it really kind of doesn't fill in with the others you know if you put this here it, it just kind of from a distance it looks less dark so I didn't like it in some of them so I pulled out this and took that out now this one a good low volume print. A tone on tone is always a good print for low volume. And I thought this yellow would be brighter, bright enough and saturated enough, but it's just not a good enough contrast when you put it with these darker fabrics. So these got rejected. This is the same thing. This is a little bit darker yellow, sort of a lime, lime yellow. 
and again the low volume print looks good but this is just too light it's not dark enough and same thing here a very good low volume print but not a very good dark print now these are good ones these these made it in so this is it's, it's more like a medium dark this blue or this teal color and then here again it looks like another little shirting type fabric these are good good contrast as well as this one very good contrast okay here's two more rejects now these are really good darks but these are these are more like a medium color fabric and these just really got rejected very fast so here's here's what you're looking for more of the really light side and the really dark side and those two will go good together now let me show you some of the choices of a master quilt maker that everyone's probably heard of. This is a kit made by Charlotte Ann Gotti, one of her classes, and I was fortunate enough to be able to buy one, and I really do like this bare paw. And look at these low volume prints. They're all over the place, and there's, I don't know how many different prints there are in this quilt, but there are, were a lot. This is the double bear paw. Here's the regular bear paw, it's just this little one, but then you just put an extra layer of claws on it and it becomes a double bear paw. So look at the choices of fabric she chose, these very bright colors. These are the four different colors in the quilt. And all of these low volume prints are white and sort of maybe an off-white because if you put a piece of paper up to it, this is really white. So you can see this is probably a little off-white. And here's the little polka dots. Here's little pins tossed around. And these are get a little bit bigger here, but they work. And then this giant polka dot and smaller polka dots. And you can just see the different variety of low volume prints in contrast to the bright colors, bright and dark, more saturated colors. And you'll see the choices of these dark ones, they're even low volume prints because the prints on these darker ones are, are small. They're small prints where from a distance they look almost solid. And so the same with this here, just a, a lower volume print, not a print that yells at you. That's what I, I tend to think of it that way is the volume is lower or higher if it's yelling at you. So these are great choices, and if you look on Pinterest, you can see a lot of different, if you search for low volume prints, uh, you'll see some good contrasting things, and just look at more quilt pictures and you'll see a lot of these contrasts. And so this is wonderful, because she's chosen all black and white low volume prints for the, the light color. And so I hope you use this as your inspiration too. Now let's move on to page two. Okay, on page two, the left side, we talk about different options because I know a lot of people don't have a whole lot of scraps or maybe they don't even care for a scrap quilt. They'd rather have something with fewer fabrics just to make it easier or that's what they prefer. You can choose two fabrics per block where you choose a light fabric and a dark fabric and you make a block or two that same way. And you can do this, uh, choose 20 different lights, 10 different lights and make your fabric, your blocks just with two different fabrics per block. Then, or you can make a two fabric quilt. You can choose two fabrics, a light and a dark and use them through the whole quilt. That would be really nice too, it's kind of a monotone quilt. The other one choice is one light background per block. So what this is, you take one background and you use it for all the light and then all of your dark fabrics are assorted, they're scrappy. And the other choice is you can use that one light fabric through the entire quilt. So wherever a light fabric is needed, you use that one fabric. So those are just some different options if you want to make your quilt different. And then finally, on the other side is a little syllabus of what we're going to do, how we're going to do the sew along. So you're today at the introdu introduction and what you need to do after today, if you want to 
nothing of this is you have to do it. This is all a suggestion. My goal is that you finish the quilt at the end or finish the quilt top at the end of the, or a week later after the last meeting that we have because it, it'll sort of be a piece as you go kind of thing too. So this week you need to choose your method for making your half square triangle. Just decide on your method and make sure you're happy with it and then start cutting for your half square triangles. Now you need a total of 320 half square triangles. So you can start cutting for your whole, all of your triangles if that's what you've decided to do. And I really suggest that if you've decided how you want to proceed, that you go ahead and cut for all of these triangles and piece them all at once. It's like an assembly line. And not only that, once you have these half square triangles done, in the coming weeks when I send out the block designs, you simply take 16 half square triangles and lay out your block and piece your block. It'll be so easy. And you can also begin cutting the frames, the sashing, and the cornerstones because you'll need the frames to finish your block. But, you know, work at your own pace. Then the goals before our next meeting, which will be January 9th, so you have almost, you know, a little over two weeks, I think, um, Try to sew and press at least 80 half square triangles. This will get you five blocks. And try to cut 10 sets of the dark frames. And then begin cutting your sashes and cornerstones. So the goal for next time we meet is to have enough triangles and frames cut for five blocks. Because you'll have this pattern to make and you'll have the pattern for four more blocks. And then this tells you on these days what blocks will be released. There will be four each week. And then the last one will have the three final blocks and we'll have the final quilt assembly. I hope you will decide to do this. It's going to be a really cute quilt and I think it's going to be fun to see how many different designs you can get from the half square triangles. And remember if you have any questions go to the Facebook group or put them in the comments on the YouTube channel. We'll see you on next time.